Hey, Justy, baby. Uh, can you hand me the 16? Get it yourself. That's just unprofessional, Josh. Got it. Nice. I think that makes it better. Cool. And a middle finger to go. All right. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for stopping by. God, that was pretty cool. Hey, Josh, how'd you do that? Welcome to Film Riot. I'm not Ryan. Or am I? Hmm. Anyways, Spider-Man just came out, and we've been wanting to do a web effect for a long time now. So, you know, synergy. And for the main web effect, we... Hey, I'm sorry. I know I knocked and opened at the same time. I don't mean to be passive aggressive. Sorry for interrupting. Who is that? It's the new intern. Hey. Hey, Justin. You have really nice skin tone. Okay, uh, do you have a second? No. Well, I was thinking since you guys did the Spider-Man effect and it was like actually kind of cool. I felt like a backhanded compliment. I would love to see if maybe you could squeeze in an effect where I am like feel cool too. I mean, we're, we're currently doing an effect. Maybe you can ask Ryan and Thompson if they could like do something. Well, Ryan's not here, so I make the decisions. Oh, can I have Ryan's office? I'll have to ask Ryan. That makes sense. Yeah, it's out of my hands. Uh, so I was just thinking maybe you could like squeeze it in um, before the episode goes up. I think I think it could offset the hero with like maybe a villain or something. All right, fine. Do you have any ideas? Yes. Oh, really? Well, do you have anything to show me? No. Oh. Can you give me five minutes? Okay, but we're currently shooting, so hurry. It'll be my second idea. My first one takes 10, so I'll do the five minute idea. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay, sorry to interrupt. For the main web effect, we first got a shot of our lens static. Then we tried a bunch of different variations of moving the lens around to get the best version of the lens being knocked back from the impact of the web. And then of course, a clean plate. Over in After Effects, we'll drop our footage into a new comp. There's a few ways to remove the hand, but the way that we opted for is using the clean plate as the base of the comp and then moving the lens shot above to roto. But using the pen tool, we added a mask around the lens with a low feather and then a separate mask to get some of the shadows with a higher feather. Set a keyframe on the first mask and animate each frame to cut around the lens as it moves. Once that's done, we just have a couple frames where the finger is visible on top. So using a duplicate layer, we can freeze frame just before the finger appears and use another mask set to intersect to show only this area. Keyframe position, scale, and rotation with motion blur enabled to match and cover up the finger on these frames, giving us this. We found it best to track multiple parts of the object for where the main strands of the web will connect. So we created multiple null objects and then one by one motion tracked the position of each area assigning each to separate nulls. Because of the motion blur and the lack of definition, a lot of this had to be manually adjusted per frame. But if we were to do this again, I would probably add small tracking markers to the object to help with tracking. Once that's all done and you have your nulls all tracked to different areas, we can start creating the web. With no layers selected, use the pen tool and click twice at one of the null top left corners to create a shape layer and add a point. Then draw a curved line ending where you want the web shape to originate from. Up at the top here, you can control stroke, thickness, and color. For our effect, we chose a size of three pixels and changed the color to gray. We can then add a few effects like light sweep to create a highlight area, turbulent displacement. Turbulent displacement, turbulent displacement. We'll use that to get rid of that completely smooth look and then a bevel alpha effect to add a bit of dimension. Now duplicate this multiple times, altering the shape to align with each null to create that web pattern. Then one more flipped in the opposite way going off screen towards Josh, who is me. I am Josh, in case you didn't know. You can make this one a bit thicker and change the turbulent display. That's, I'm, okay, everyone calm down, all right? Perverted. And change the turbulent effect if needed. You can also tweak the light sweep effect on each strand to make them feel more random. Create a black solid layer beneath the strands, then select all and pre-compose as our web comp. Set the blending mode to screen and use the puppet pin tool to add a point at each strand end, as well as the web origin and the final strand just off screen. Select all the null layers and press the P key to show the position. On the web comp, press the U key to show each pin we added. And using the pick whip tool next to each point, drag and drop 
over the position of the corresponding null to link them. And make sure to pick whip to the correct nulls for each strand, otherwise it can create a total f***ing mess. And now the web ends should be connected to the lens as we play through. But before we continue, I want to thank Musicbed for partnering with us on this episode. They have been one of our main sources of music for at least eight years now, and there's two main factors why that's still the case. One, the quality of the music is some of the best out there. They aren't production music or royalty free, which is great because that means we can get access to higher quality music. And who they get are musicians and composers that pour their hearts and souls into their music. And that's a big distinction. You can find a lot of music that is clearly made just to be sold. For me, I can feel the difference when there's a passion behind the music. And I think it makes a big difference for our projects since I think the audience can feel that as well. And through Musicbed, we can license all of that for film, TV shows, advertising, or whatever else we need. And the second thing is they really are a company of awesome people who care about creators like us. And you can see that in the quality of the work that they put out and how hard they push to make all of this music accessible to creators. Then there's a subscription format, which yes, I know, everything is subscription right now and people will always complain about that. But with music licensing, it's an absolute godsend. This is the one place that subscription is absolutely needed for us. We are constantly needing new music every week with multiple tracks. And with this, we have unlimited access to their roster of artists for one monthly or yearly fee. So if you want to check it out, you can create a free account to listen and download Watermark tracks before committing, no credit card needed. Ryan also has a playlist of some of his favorite tracks on there. There's a link for that in the notes, along with a link to get started with Musicbed. And if you want to get great music and help us out, use the coupon code FILMRIOT at checkout to get your first month free when you purchase an annual subscription. It's ready. Okay, cool. It's in the subfolder Spider-Man can suck one and it's clip two, but it's 1080, it's not 4K. I'm sure it's fine. You can cut to it. Oh, now? Yep. I'm rolling and I hope I'm in frame and focus. All right, so Josh, I know this isn't like a great get up, but picture Willem Dafoe as a Green Goblin, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man in the early two, 2000s. These are hacky sacks, but I was thinking Thompson could maybe VFX them as his little grenade ball things that he throws at people in New York. And he, you know, if you don't frame my feet, we'll have to do the snowboard thing he flies on, but I could be like, And like F you, Spider-Man. But that's all I have because you didn't give me a lot of time. I mean, I could probably think of more if there was more time to do, but it just seemed like you really needed this quick. If there's anything I'm good at, it's I need more time. Remember, this is my second idea. The first one's better, but this is it. What do you think? It was, <laughs> yeah, it was great. We can't do it for this episode, but it was really something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe like for a future episode. I think we'll table it for now. That's totally cool. Yeah. Are you okay? I'm fine. You don't seem fine. Oh, just, no, don't. Don't cry. <laughs> right, shoot at repeat. Sometimes you just gotta fail, 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 repeat. That feels a little dramatic, but I gotta get back to the episode. So, you know, okay. you know, sorry for making you cry. Okay. Sorry, I got my hopes up. It's on me. No, yeah. All right, open or close? Uh, closed. Okay. Oh, no, all, yeah, all the way. Right. Yep. So close. All done, close the door. Justin, close the door. Shut, shut it. You're doing it. You're doing it. Yep. All right. <clears throat> Getting back into it, for the origin point of the web, we will manually keyframe the position to react similarly to the motion of the lens impact, including at the start, having it stretched as it enters the frame. We can add extra motion by alt clicking the stopwatch and adding an expression like wiggle, open bracket, 12, comma, 12, close bracket which will give this random wiggling motion. For the strand going off screen, we moved that further away and also used a wiggle expression. This time, wiggle, open bracket, nine, comma, 18, close bracket for some separate motion. For the first few frames to have it enter the screen, you can move the null layers. They already have their positions keyframed and the puppet pins are all linked, so moving the nulls will control the web. For more details, we can jump into the web comp and use some free stock photos for real spider webs. Links in the notes. You can do this by tinting it black and white and adding 
contrast to make the background black, isolating the webs and set the layer to screen. We chose different sections and masked them to our web area to get this. Back in the main comp, we added some extra effects for final touches, such as fractal noise set to overlay with a small scale and lowered brightness and contrast to break up that solid look of our lines. You could also animate the evolution if you like to have that breakup pattern change over time. Next, a CC glass effect, but with low softness and height so the effect isn't too strong. Make sure these effects are before the puppet pin effect so they warp the same way. Once we enable motion blur, we get this. As an alternative for anyone who has our slime pack, we have these tendrils and thin slime assets, which can work great for webs. You can use these instead of the shape layer strands and curve them using a mesh warp effect or the bended effect. We felt that these added more of an organic feel, and the main tendril worked better than the shape layer strand version. Because this is thicker and we can see through it, we can add an adjustment layer beneath the web comp and use a compound blur, selecting the web as the blur layer so that it affects the background seen through it. Lastly, for a shadow, we rendered out our web effect and dropped it in the comp above our footage, using an invert effect to make the web black and set the layer to multiply to remove the white background. Use a blur effect to match the other shadows in the scene and you should get something like this. And speaking of our packs, we are currently having a sale on our store right now till the 23rd. Go to the store, say it, say it good. Say it, you son of a bitch. Everything on the store is 35% off throughout the entire sale. But then each day we are choosing individual packs to be 50% off. So if you're looking to grab something from our store, right now is the best time. So, you know, do it, motherfucker. For the wider shot of me, we copied one of the shape strands and this time keyframed the path and animated it each frame to whip out of my wrist till it went off screen and then back. Keyframing the light sweep too can add a jitter or traveling effect. For a couple frames before we see the lens in my hand, we used a duplicate footage layer set to freeze frame and rotoed the lens. Keyframe the position for the lens to enter from off screen and enable motion blur, trimming the layer to see just a few frames. Even though it's heavily motion blurred, it just adds a little extra information to tell the audience the object is moving through the frame. But that's it for today. Don't forget- You're back. Since you make the decisions, Was there more to that? Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Okay. I should have knocked. Wouldn't have made a difference. Sorry, door, door etiquette, I go hard on, so I'm sorry for going hard on it, on you. I didn't mean that sexually. Oh my God. Sorry. S boundaries, I have a problem with. This is a very weird interaction. Sorry. This usually goes better when Ryan's here because he just tells me to leave and I leave and it doesn't carry on like this, so that's on me or him. Why are you saying this? You're doing great. Why did that feel like a threat? All right. See you later. See ya. Want it open? Please leave. Please. Okay. Well, that's it for today. Don't forget to check out the 12 Days of Christmas sale you have until the 23rd. Also, if you're not subscribed, make sure you do that and hit the bell button so that you're notified, even though you probably won't be, because you know. <laughs> um, but until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.